just about every single time I upload a video about my home automation system, I get some variation on pretty much the same comment. The comment is basically, why did you go to so much trouble to hardwire everything? Why not just stick an ESP8266 in it? Use Wi-Fi, make it easy. It's 2017, it'll be so much better. You're living in the past. You know, some variation of that. So what these people are suggesting is that they want me to go from a really complex system like a wire with a button on the end of it. Well, in that case, we'll take an ESP8266 microcontroller with Wi-Fi on it. So, I don't know, 10 million transistors, however much is in there. Then we need some kind of power management system. So voltage regulator, battery management type thing. We need a battery to stick on it because if you're not going to use a battery, then you've got to run cables to it for power. So what's the problem with um, wiring up my light switches or whatever it is? And then of course you need the actual button, whatever it is, it's going to trigger the ESP8266 to connect to Wi-Fi, send the signal to the MQTT broker or whatever. So you've got yourself a little Wi-Fi enabled light switch that you can stick on the wall anywhere. Of course, you've got to keep the battery charged up. There's that 10 million odd transistors that I was talking about. There's firmware that you've got to worry about. So you've got to do updates on your software, on your switches. And people say, this is so much easier. Just put Wi-Fi in it. It'll be so much better because the way I've done it is so hard. I mean, a bit of wire and a switch way too complicated. But it's not just about complexity. There are a whole lot of reasons that I really dislike wireless systems, Wi-Fi in particular for home automation. There are certain parts of the system where it really makes sense, but for uh, some of the really core parts of the system, you really should be using wires. Imagine you get on an aeroplane and you are gonna fly off somewhere overseas. And then you discovered that the designer of the aircraft, when they were sitting down, thought it's too much trouble running a wire all the way from the front of the plane where the cockpit is down to the back to control that, you know, big flappy tail thing. That's a long bit of wire. That's a real pain. Let's just make a wireless link. We'll have some kind of a connection where we'll send the signal by wireless from the cockpit down to the actuator on the tail rudder. And that's what we're going to use to control the plane. You wouldn't feel really safe on that plane, would you? or talk to any industrial automation engineer, someone that wires up factories like assembly lines and machines that make stuff. Suggest to them that instead of running cables down from the controllers to the actuators and motors and sensors, they should just use wireless signals. They'll laugh at you. That's really not a valid way to do a system that you have to have as reliably functioning all the time. The other thing that a lot of people forget about is the longevity of these projects. I mean, you can mess around on your workbench and put together an ESP8266 and a button and have it send something off and make it work. That's fine. But houses aren't built to last for months. They're built to last for many, many decades. Will your Wi-Fi system with its ESP8266 still be working 20 years from now? Probably not. Will the access point still be working 20 years from now? Probably not. This bit of wire will. And when I push back and say, no, Wi-Fi really isn't suitable for a system that's going to be in place for a long time and that you absolutely have to have operate securely, then they say, well, but they're running encryption. So, you know, Wi-Fi, it's encrypted, WPA2, all of that sort of thing. So I'm just being paranoid. I'm being old fashioned, wanting to send critical control signals down a wire instead of over Wi-Fi. Well, just this week, we saw the WPA2 protocol being compromised. And there are probably literally billions of devices around the world right now with vulnerable software on them running Wi-Fi. Now, I often get this objection in terms of things like my light switches. People say, why do you cable the light switches? Just use Wi-Fi. But everything I've said goes doubly for anything that's security related. If you have motion detectors that are linked by RF instead of actually hardwired, if you have security cameras, a lot of people say, why have you got those analog cameras with you know, coaxial cable running to them? That's old fashioned. Just get an IP camera with Wi-Fi, power it up, you stick it in there, it logs into your local network, your Wi-Fi network, and then you never have to worry about it. But have you seen these things? This is a broad spectrum RF jammer. It will jam GPS, Wi-Fi, 2G, 3G, Bluetooth, 433 megahertz, wireless, pretty much anything that transmits, this thing will stuff it up. Anyone who carries one of these around has, is a walking 20 meter black spot Anything that relies on wireless signals anywhere around them will just stop working. 
So imagine a home invasion where someone walks into your house with one of these in their pocket. All of a sudden your light switches don't work. Your security cameras are offline. Your motion detectors don't work. Basically, they were like a walking EMP for any wireless system. But in my house, all the motion detectors are hardwired. All of the security cameras are hardwired. Everything will keep working, even if someone turns on a jammer. Now, does Wi-Fi have a place in home automation? Absolutely, I use it all over the place. In fact, I've got four wireless access points in this house. One of the access points is set up specifically with a different SSID, and it allows me to keep devices that are part of the home automation system separate from just normal computers and other things around the house. And over the last year and a half or so, I've now used more than 200 ESP8266s, both in my own house and in customers' houses, but always for non-critical things. I wouldn't rely on Wi-Fi for something that, if it stops working, it's going to be a real problem. It's fantastic for things like data collection systems or low priority systems, things like status displays. One episode a little while ago, I showed the ambient tile display in my kitchen, which illuminates different things depending on you know, things like which rubbish bins need to be taken out that week. That's run off an ESP8266 and it connects by Wi-Fi. I don't have anything against Wi-Fi when it's used properly. Just don't see that you can take out all of the wires, run Wi-Fi everywhere, and everything will be fine. Because it might be fine right now, it might not be fine next week, or it might not be fine in 10 years. So next time you see a project like one of my home automation projects that I've hardwired, and you think, should have just been Wi-Fi? Think about this for a second. Would you want Wi-Fi to be used to send the signal from the brake position sensor in your car to the engine management system? Or do you want a bit of wire carrying that signal? Now, I've already uploaded many videos that are about projects that rely on Wi-Fi, and I've got more in the works. I'm going to have more Sonoff videos. The Sonoff is a really cool product. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you shouldn't use Sonoffs. They're fantastic. But just think about the place you're using them, and don't just think, Oh, that bit of wire with a switch, I can replace that with Wi-Fi. It'll be so much simpler and easier and more reliable and it'll work forever. Because it just doesn't work that way. In most situations, nothing beats a piece of wire. Also, did you know that most wireless access points have a limitation in terms of how many active client connections they can handle? The number is actually surprisingly low. Many access points can only handle you know, 16 or 20 concurrent connections. By the time you start putting Wi-Fi devices all around your house, you'll rapidly run out of the number of devices that your access point can handle. Then of course you need multiple access points, you get channel collisions, you run out of bandwidth, all sorts of problems like that. So for mobile projects or temporary projects or low priority devices, sure, use Wi-Fi. But if you're going to be putting a switch on the wall and you want it to be still there working 10 years from now, run a wire to it.